we need to develop a general mathematical way of describing the wave amplitude, the amount of disturbance, as a function of the amount of time it's elapsed and where we are along the medium. We're going to call this our mathematical description of traveling waves. Waves are a little complicated. They're more complicated than just an oscillator. When we think back to an oscillator, it's a thing that's jiggling back and forth. And all we're trying to really dis do is describe its displacement. We always describe its displacement with respect to some equilibrium point. If this is the dotted line representing where the mass would be if we hadn't jiggled it, then our, our object is to describe how far away off of that, that equilibrium point the oscillator is. And all we have to do is describe that as a single function of a function of a single argument, the time. So it's a function x as a function of time, and that tells us what the oscillator is doing. Waves are a little bit more complicated, however, because we have to do something that describes the motion of a disturbance in both position and time, because a wave travels on down the length of a medium. We can think of this in one of two ways. Let's imagine a surfing wave, a, a wave in the ocean. We could be standing on the beach and watching this thing move on down the length of the water, or the, the path of the water. So what we want to be doing is describing the shape of the wave as we look at any snapshot in time. On the other hand, we can imagine we're a buoy out there floating in the water, and we want to just describe as a function of time what's happening to us. Well, we jiggle up and down. And that only happens for the brief instant in time when the, when the antinode of a wave passes on by. So a wave description describe, needs to have both the location that we're talking about and the time. So our description will be a wave amplitude, the amount of disturbance, and we're going to call that y. And it's going to be a function of where we are along the medium. That's going to be called x, and what amount of time has elapsed. Let's imagine that time t equals 0. The wave pulse is given by some function y equals f of x, and that could be this red curve right here. So there's a blip. I might have tugged at the slinky, or I might have dropped a stone in the water, and all of a sudden there's a wave pulse right there. At a later time, the pulse has moved further down, down the medium, and at time t prime, its shape hasn't necessarily changed, but it's in a completely new location. In the time t prime that has lapsed, the wave pulse has moved a distance d, which is velocity times time. I'm assuming that this wave has some characteristic velocity at which it's going to travel. The pulse still looks the same, it's just now a distance d away. I could even show you that it's really the same by drawing a new set of coordinate axes, x prime and y prime, that are just shifted compared to the first two, and you'd be hard pressed to look at the difference between the dotted curve and the solid curve with respect to their dotted axes or solid axes. They'd look kind of like the same, a wave pulse pretty close to the origin. The only difference is that these new coordinates, x prime and y prime, are shifted by the same distance d. I could then expect that the new function, y prime, which is a function of x prime, is just going to be the same mathematical function as was y is a function of x. The only difference is that there's a difference in coordinates. y is equal to y prime, on the vertical axis, this, look, this direction looks like the same as this direction, but x prime is shifted. It's the original x minus this v times t prime because I'm subtracting off uh, all of this part of the, the, the wasted x axis in order to, to move my new x prime axis over here. That means that I expect my functional form for the wave to look like something like y is a function of not x, but rather x minus vt. And that, mean, that way of describing the function will allow me to have a wave that moves to the right and still looks the same and has the same shape. It just is keep, it continues moving a distance uh, velocity times time away as the wave propagates off to the right. So in general, wave functions that move to the right will always be of some form y is a function of the variable x minus vt. It only matters how big x is compared to vt. That's for a wave moving to the right. A wave moving to the left actually depends on the opposite because the velocity has the opposite sign. The velocity would be negative. So in fact, y is a function of x plus vt, assuming velocity, the v is just representing speed. 
and so we use the plus sign to help us uh, tell us that it's moving to the right, excuse me, to the left as opposed to the right. So at different times, t equals 0 seconds, 1 second, 2 seconds, this pulse moves to the left, whereas this one moves to the right. We'll always be looking for one of these functional forms, f of x plus or minus vt, and that's how we're going to know that we have a traveling wave.